Mongoose Magic Moments, the Tsabokalodi Yellow Mongoose Group. Mongoose Conservation Through Education. <laughs> Hello out there, glorious conservation friends. I hope you're all staying very well. It's the 6th of March, 2022. And I'm out here at one of the sleeping burrows of the Tsabokalodi Yellow Mongoose group, experiencing some mongoose magic moments. Here in the Meerkat Magic Valley Reserve of the Meerkat Magic Conservation Project, we're starting to get slightly cooler days, 36 to 38 degrees centigrade. We've had 12 millimeters of rainfall a few days ago, and before that, seven and five. That's after a month, which was scorchingly hot with temperatures over 48 degrees centigrade, some of the hottest places in the world, and no rainfall. The reserve river is flowing again in places with recent flash flooding. So that's very fortunate, and there is a spattering of greenery coming out here again with these succulents, which have stored up some of the water. Other flowers have died out, as you can see, with this very dried up area. Currently, there are three in the group, and I'd like to discuss what I refer to here as conservation through education. It's really important, I believe, to protect entire species in their natural habitats, not remove them to protect them artificially in environments which are created by people, but rather in their own preferences. And that way you in conserve the entire ecology, even aspects which we do not yet fully understand are then protected for future generations. Often the species can protect themselves beautifully within these environments. So if we start off looking at larger scale environments to protect, we can conserve the species within them. However, I do believe one of the biggest challenges in conservation, and as a professional nature conservationist since 1993, I do believe that sharing information is critical to overcome ignorance. If people understand something, they often become self-motivated to conserve it, to find out more. And of course, by doing this, they can actually do something that is far more sustainable, which is what I refer to as self-motivated conservation. Not because they've been told to do it, but because they see the value of it. And quite commonly, it's referred to as, if it pays, it stays in conservation, but value needn't be monetary. In order to understand the aesthetic value, however, in conservation, quite commonly takes a financial standpoint to get people beyond the basic needs so that they can start seeing the aesthetic needs. Again, at this particular burrow, it's been cordoned off prevent the Katunguru cattle from going into it and trampling it, which they occasionally will have done in the past. And when they visit this area, they now know to just leave this cordoned off area alone. Now, this is an example of what I call conservation through education here, because it's very easy to implement. It only takes a brief amount of time and very limited resources and barrier systems can be protected which in turn will help to protect the species that inhabit them. And these wildlife hotels, which I've discussed in detail in my book, meerkats, are the home of many different species. So just by cordoning off this area many, many years ago, because I began working on this particular study group back in 2008, this burrow system has been protected. Other animals, which are naturally occurring, can still move around easily through this area. But the larger species, which are farm species, which also have value in the area, because it comes back to that if it pays, it stays, farming and conservation can coexist here. And this is a simple example of it in action. Here we have the dominant female, Tsabokolodi. Recently, they've been excavating this burrow, as you can see, with all these tracks. I call this the bush newspaper. It's fascinating to see which species 
I've moved through an area just by reading the newspaper, the daily news section, for example. And this is a highlight reel of what happened this morning. Cooperative digging, just as with meerkats, where many of the mongooses will actually work together. When I refer to mongooses, I'm actually referring to, tragically, what is commonly villainized in the media. Meerkats in the past were killed indiscriminately and blamed for spreading rabies. And out of the thousands of meerkats I have encountered in the wild over decades, I've never encountered a rabid meerkat. I've worked with two of the three recognized subspecies currently of the meerkat or suricat as well. Synictus penicillata, the yellow mongoose, as you can see here with the characteristic white tip to the tail, is commonly poisoned, trapped, shot at, because people who are ignorant about the true value of the species believe that somehow the species is a threat to them or their livestock, which is not the case. And again, this is what I refer to as conservation through education. Yee's perceptions can be modified simply through exposure. Unfortunately, in science, quite commonly, this information is not easily accessible to the public. Scientific publications quite commonly are not read by the public and can have lots of jargon in them which make them more difficult to understand for somebody who's not maybe technically experienced. I have myself numerous scientific publications and it inspired me to get the information out in a more usable form and that is exactly what I've been doing over the last 20 plus years making little mini conservation through education videos such as this. Hopefully in time other people will learn more about it's not the size of the animal or plant for example it doesn't need to be an elephant for it to be important in an ecosystem. These yellow mongooses are protected on this property which I own and I'm simply a guardian of this particular project. Hopefully in time other people will be inspired to recognize the incredible value. For example, right now I am the only person on the planet out of billions standing this close to a wild yellow mongoose, of that I am certain. My point being is what kind of price tag do you put on something with that type of aesthetic value? It's priceless to me and to other people who may wish to have th this experience. It is not something you can simply go out to a shop and go, oh, I'd like to experience that now. It has taken me many, many years to earn this selective trust. These animals are not tame, as I've discussed in numerous videos. Can I just stop there for a moment as I'm enjoying what I am calling the mongoose magic here. This is another mongoose magic moment. It's a bokulori busy auto-grooming herself. By getting close to wildlife in an ethical way without taming them, it is possible to observe their natural behaviors as if you are an object. They do not perceive me, it seems, as if I'm one of them. They will treat me as a threat if I'm not very careful, and even a movement that I don't mask with sounds that they're familiar with can cause a disturbance.